Let's start reading in verse number 13. The Bible says, And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. <clears throat> and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees, which the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. That's what I want to focus on this morning, verse 23. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Now I was thinking about this darkness that could be felt. And I remember going hunting for the one of the first times all by myself going deer hunting. I, I went off the back of this cornfield down a ridge and the sign just kept getting greater the farther I went. And I was just following this trail, went all the way down deep into the swamp and found a great place to hunt. And everything was fine and dandy until the sun began to set. And uh, I was just a little bitty fella, just started hunting by myself. And that sun disappeared and, and it was pitch dark. And I tell you, you can almost feel the darkness around you. I remember trying to exit the woods that night and traverse my way out. Everything looked totally different. I saw these glowing red eyes coming toward me. I had a little bitty flashlight, and I got my gun, and I backed up, and it started getting closer and closer, and I got my gun on it, and it ended up being a possum. And, but my heart, I thought it was a bear or a mountain lion. Something was coming to get me. The darkness could be felt. You could not see a thing. But the children of Israel here at the land of Egypt, the darkness was so great, the Bible said it could be felt. And is that not the same in your day and my day? You can feel the darkness. You can feel the oppression. Some days you wake up and you try to live a Christian life. It's just a battle, just a struggle. The darkness could be felt. I want to give you a message this morning on how you can have light in a dark day. How you can have light in a dark day. Number one, we can know the light. I'm glad that the, the Lord didn't leave us in darkness. If we are saved this morning, Amen. we have that light. Amen. The whole land of Egypt was cloaked in darkness, but the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. We don't have to live in the dark. The Bible says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. So we see God is light. God created light. And then we find uh, Simeon at Jesus' dedication prophesied that Jesus was this light that would come and shine light to the Gentiles. And then later in John 12, 46, we find Jesus saying, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So we find that God is light. Jesus is light. Not only that, but God has given us his word, his beautiful word, as a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I don't have to live in darkness. I was talking to Brother Owen last night. 
how God's will is not some mystical thing that we just happen upon one day. God's will is obeying His Word and working and doing what His will is. And until that time, He will show you the next step, then the next step, just a little bit of illumination as we go. God's Word is a lamp in our feet and a light in our path. The brother read uh, verse 130 of Psalm 119, Thy Word gives light. So we see God's Word illuminates our darkness. The Bible says, Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day, ye, we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. That light gives off warmth. It illuminates. It gives light. That light purifies and also that light agitates. Have you ever flipped the light on somebody and they've been in the dark for a while, their eyes have been adjusted, you flip that light on, they can get pretty angry. They can get upset with you uh, because you have exposed their eyes to something that hurts them, they think. Whereas the light is there to help, they think it's hurting them. So the light can agitate as well as we're light in this dark world. So number one, we must know the light. Number two, we must walk. In the light. The Bible says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Amen. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Those children of Israel, they, they did nothing to produce the light. The only thing they could do was be where God wanted them to be. They were in their house obeying, doing what God wanted them to do. They couldn't control what was around them, their circumstances. Just like you, you can't control what's going on around you, the plagues that have come in your life. All you can do is be that light. You can be in the light, walk in the light, be obedient to it. If we're walking in that light, we're going to have direction. Have you ever been lost and you're, you're going through the woods maybe behind your house as a little kid? And, and you get turned around, and it gets dark, no familiar landmarks, but you look, and there's the neighbor's porch light through the woods right there. And yeah, there's another neighbor's porch light. And from that light, you're able to get your bearings yeah, and find yeah, your way home. Right. And that's what God's Word is to us. If we're walking in the light, we're going to have direction. We're going to know which way to go. Yeah. But if we're in the light, look at the, that verse again. We have fellowship one with another. So we see these church arguments. We see people bickering and fighting. We know they're not walking in the light if they're doing that. Because the Bible says we'll have fellowship one with another. And then thirdly, if we're walking in the light, we're going to be cleansed. The Bible says, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. This is a, a totally different walk than the world's walk. We're walking in the spirit that we fulfill not the lust of the flesh. You know what? I thought about this. The brother was talking about he used to be in uh, pest control. Have you ever flipped the light on and turn, or not termites, but cockroaches went everywhere? They, they don't like the light. You know what? God didn't call us to be cockroaches. He called us to be Christians. We should love the light. And when you see, when you see a person that says, I'm a Christian, but they hate being around the light, something's up. Something's wrong with that. You notice that verse says, walk in the light. It didn't say speed walk through the light or run in the light. It just says walk in the light. Be consistent. Just be steadfast in your Christian walk. It's, it's not a race. You just take your time. Be steadfast. Be consistent. Walk in the light. I love this verse. Jesus said in uh, John 8, 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of of life. So we've got to know the light. We've got to walk in the light. And thirdly, we must share the light. You know those children of Israel, can you imagine the witness they were that day? They had light in their dwelling when nobody else did. Can you imagine an Egyptian peering through his window? The Bible says they didn't go anywhere. But can you imagine? He's looking through the window. He knows his neighbor over there. And he knows his family lives down the road. And he's looking. He's looking, it's all dark, it's all dark everywhere he looks, and then there's the children of Israel by the other side of the tracks over there, and they've all got light. It's lit up like Christmas time over there, and he looks, and the, the family gathers around the table, they're praying, and they're praising the Lord, and they're just having a sweet time of fellowship. They've got peace in their house, they've got light, they've got joy, and all of his friends and family, they're still in darkness. Yeah. Can I say this? God has called you and me to be a light yeah. in this Amen. dark world. Right. Yeah. In a time of darkness, you should have peace. You should have joy. They should see something different Amen. in your dwelling. Amen. The Bible says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. 
Neither do man light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on that candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. As believers, we are called to carry that light. Be a light bearer. John the Baptist was the absolute perfect example of this. And the Bible records it in the, the, the first chapter of John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of what? The light. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Amen. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Thank God for that light. It's been said, lamps do not talk, but they illuminate. Lighthouses make no noise, but they give light. Thus... Must the walk of a Christian be a living sermon? We know the light. We must walk in light. We must shine the light. There's a call comes ringing or the restless way. Send the light. There were souls to rescue. There were souls to save. Send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel Amen. light. Let it shine forevermore. Amen. I love this poem. His lamp am I to shine where he shall say. And lamps are not for sunny rooms nor for the light of day. But for the dark places of the earth, where shame and crime and wrong have birth. And so, sometimes a flame we find, clear shining through the night. So bright, we do not see the lamp, but only see the light. So may I shine his light the flame, that men may glorify his name. Amen. The Bible says, but ye are a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood, yes. a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? That ye should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his Amen. marvelous light. How to have Amen. light in a dark day. Thank you, preacher. Amen. 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 That's all right. Yes, sir. But I like that. God didn't call us to be cockroaches. He <laughs> called us to be Christians. That's good. Amen. I like it. Brother, you might be the youngest preacher that ever made my book of quotes. You made it. You made it. You have arrived. All right. Let's have, um, let's have Brother 